Hey, Retcon Raider here, with special thanks to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible, including but not limited to Dragon Matrix 7, Matthew Smith, Revenant, Aloise, Dracith, Eerie V23, Egg, Egon Alter, Emil, Excelsior, Goatlaib, James Tremier, Kazorm, Nathan Welch Jr., Overlord Ferrum, Random Passerby, Robbie B., Thomas Piatkowski, Trip Hop and Skip, and Valenrug. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, let's get started. And welcome back to Scarlet Hollow. As our Stella quest begins in earnest, where, oh where, has our conflicted content creator gotten herself off to? And wherever it is, let's hope that uh, Gretchen can keep her safe until we track her down. I think it's pretty obvious she clearly wasn't in the best frame of mind when last we saw her. But then again, who is? Scarlet Hollow is a town that kind of chews people up and spits them out, as evidenced by the variety of traumatic events that we have encountered or explored in the three days since we first arrived in town. Present company absolutely included. That said, uh, obviously the best place to start would be Stella's house, though that's a bit too obvious, but let's give it a shot. Let's check out Stella's place. Good place to start. Maybe she just slept in. That's what I'm hoping. I would have gone already, but uh, I was kind of nervous about doing anything by myself today. Just in case I ran into yet another horror from beyond the veil or whatever. Yeah, good call. You make your way towards Stella's house. The door is as pristine as any wooden door. No bloody handprints in sight. Any telltale sign of Wayne absent. If something happened here, it didn't involve him. At least, not at the front door. Kanika knocks anxiously on the door. It creaks open. The house is quiet, the world outside muffled as you take a cautious step over the threshold into the muted air of the living room. No excitable pug rushes to greet you at the door, and you have a feeling that no Stella is going to emerge from the shadows to sleepily greet you. You seem to recall that Stella closed the door behind her when the two of you left for the library yesterday morning. We ate breakfast here together yesterday. She closed the door behind us. And we were both with her for the rest of the day. So she came home last night? Or somebody else was here? Might as well invite ourselves in, right? Yeah, yeah, we should, uh, we should check it out. Cool, I'll be brave and go first. Avery casually steps over the threshold into Stella's house. The living room is almost exactly as you saw it the other day. Aside from a corner of the room dedicated to Gretchen, Stella's house almost feels like a museum. Everything's organized with a sort of tidiness you wouldn't expect from someone as rough and tumble as Stella, and only a handful of objects feel like they belong to her. Oh man, yeah, this, this is rough. I mean, up until a few years ago, this was the home she shared with her parents up until they died. And it's not like when someone dies, the, the artifacts they left behind just vanish, as evidenced by the cobweb-covered boots there. It's, uh, it's awkward. It's difficult. Trying to decide what to do with all that stuff when people you've lived your whole lives with are just gone. You know, part of you wants to preserve everything to try to maintain some semblance of the status quo that you just can't hope to, uh, to reobtain. 
I mean, you know, it's not healthy, but I get it. Whatever happened to Stella, it doesn't look like it happened here. Doesn't look like there was a struggle or anything, unless it happened in another room. Or maybe someone or something caught her off guard. You didn't have to add that last part. I'm going to forget that you said that, and just be thankful that this doesn't look like a crime scene. Stella's kitchen is messier than she left it yesterday. A couple cabinets are hanging open, and a loaf of bread sits on the counter by a used butter knife. Cat. Cat. The crust of the bread has gone somewhat stale, about as much as you'd expect after being left out overnight. Whoever left it here left many hours ago. Uh, it's a little messy, but it doesn't look like anything violent happened here. It's possible she came home, grabbed some food, and left in a hurry, right? Did she have somewhere she needed to be? She didn't say she had something she had to rush off to. Maybe she just had a panic attack after being possessed. But that was over 12 hours ago. I'd hope she would be home by now if that was the case. Is Stella the sort of person to stop back home to make a snack in the middle of a mental health crisis? Yes. And it's comforting to think that might be all that happened. A panic attack is much more manageable than rotting ghouls or parasitic doughboys. You make your way down the hall to what you assume to be Stella's room. Yeah, I think that's a pretty safe bet. She's not here. <laughs> Mothman. And a little Gretchen. That's cute. This is a nice room, relatively speaking. Would have expected a fancier recording rig for a content creator. I really like the uh, corkboard covered with conspiracy strings. Though it's a little untidy, it's the usual sort of untidiness that accumulates when someone doesn't often have guests in their bedroom. There aren't any signs of violence. No streaks of blood and pus that might belong to a certain phantom miner. He hasn't been here. You do notice, though, that her jacket is nowhere in sight. It isn't in her closet, and it wasn't on the coat rack in the other room. Stella's jacket is gone. The Letterman one. It wasn't on the rack in the other room. It's not in here. And she didn't have it yesterday. Okay, I'm sold. Between this and the kitchen, she must have come home last night. And it seems like she was the one who decided to leave. No struggle or anything. You go to check Stella's computer. Uh, I'm not sure we should be snooping on her computer. Isn't that an invasion of privacy? We already broke into her house, right? For all we know, there could be some sort of clue on there. Like a note, detailing exactly where she is. We didn't break into her house. The door was left wide open. That is true. But uh, perhaps she also left her computer wide open. In which case, I guess it's okay? Exactly. If there isn't a password, maybe we're supposed to take a peek. Maybe we'll find the first note in an elaborate scavenger hunt she set up overnight. I'm gonna say probably not. Okay, fine. But I'm gonna stand over your shoulder the whole time and make sure you don't go looking for anything... personal. Ah, uh, sticky notes. I miss having sticky notes all over everything. And there's her father, and uh, what looks, I'm assuming, to be a young Gretchen. 
Jersey Devil. Nice try, Mr. FBI. Stella's desktop is horrifically cluttered. There are simply too many files and folders to fit on her monitor, and they overlap each other in chaotic, multi-layered display. Whoa, how do we find anything on here? I'm suddenly a lot less worried about an invasion of privacy and a lot more worried about this being a complete waste of time. It would take you all day to count the number of open tabs in Stella's browser. So numerous are her tabs that you can't see a single icon. A sea of rounded, featureless triangles from Windows Edge to Windows Edge. Her most recent open tab is a post on Uncle Carl's Bigfoot Farm, a forum for cryptozoology enthusiasts. I am unfamiliar with that one. The post in question is titled, Something Big is Beginning in Scarlet Hollow. Hey everyone, I was out chasing a skunk ape sighting the other day and I found these weird little guys. My friend's mom says they're something called ditchlings, but I've never heard of them before. Anyone have any good leads? Camera isn't shaky enough. This is totally staged. Clean footage and some sort of cryptid nobody has heard of except for your friend's mom? The only thing I'm seeing when I Google Ditchlings is some city in England. Thought you were legit. Guys, since when did high quality footage count as anything other than actual evidence? Those things are terrifying. Since every low-budget horror movie started doing guerrilla marketing, I smell an ARG. An ARG. I'm serious. I've got a ton of extra footage. Look at this nest. They've been doing something to the animals in town. And they're apparently some sort of bad omen. Like Mothman. Okay, I'm listening. I love me a Mothman. I believe you. Ugh, lucky. You're falling right into our lap. I don't trust YouTubers. They're entertainers, not scientists. The thread continues into the next day. Hey, okay, so one, this isn't an ARG. I would never. And two, you're not going to believe this, but we went into an abandoned mine last night to investigate things, and I'm pretty sure we found some Tommy knockers. Listen to this knocking we managed to catch on tape. There's a link to an audio file titled TommyKnockersReal.Wave. Just because you put the word real in your file name doesn't mean they're real. Two supernatural events on back-to-back -back nights? This is so fake. I can't believe I bought into that River Runner hype. You're so full of it. YouTubers are always going to sell out to big indie horror. This is kidnapped by aliens all over again. Also, doughy white things and now loud popping noises? This is definitely an ARG. Did you sell out to Pillsbury? <laughs> nice leap. Stop cyberbullying her or I'm going to call the mods. Locking this thread and giving everyone a seven day ban. No cyberbullying and no self promo. The thread ends. Yep, that's, uh, that's certainly the internet. Actually, uh, pretty tame for the real internet. Not enough swearing or borderline pornography. Wow, poor Stella. Remind me to never be internet famous. Here's hoping my SoundCloud stays niche and underappreciated until the day I die. Okay, sure, yeah, wish granted. That's like... 99.82% of all SoundCloud accounts ever. You check Stella's search history. She hasn't visited any websites since Tuesday night. If she came home after last night's incident, she didn't touch her browser. Her search history is almost entirely work-related. A furious series of queries for various monsters and cryptids that might fit the profile of Ditchlings. That's that.
Okay, I think we've seen enough. Thank God. You know, not to take away from the seriousness of the situation or anything, but it's interesting seeing someone's room like this, unfiltered. It's, uh, it's like a snapshot of their real life, who they are. Uh, speak for yourself. If the roles were reversed and I was missing and you and Stella were poking around in my room unannounced, I'd be completely mortified. Spoken like someone with a whole lot of secrets. My room is immaculate. A guest could drop by unannounced at 2am and I wouldn't sweat a thing. Congratulations on having your shit together. Thank you. I come by it honest. I will say that this is what her room's been like for pretty much the entire time I've known her. The only thing that's changed is the computer getting a lot fancier. I will take your word on that. It could use a few more houseplants. I'll put together some trimmings after we found her. Aw, oh, she still does those corkboard with string things. She loves putting strings on there. I don't think they actually mean anything, but they're more for decoration anyway. Oh, absolutely. There's There are much more efficient ways to track conspiracy theories. That is purely theatrical. Fun, though. All right, guys. I don't think we're going to find much else here. Let's move on. Okay, so she probably came home last night, but she's not here now. And we don't have any idea where she might have gone. I thought I was overreacting this morning. I hoped she would just be sleeping in. I can't believe she's actually missing. We'll find her. We're going to the cops. I know they probably won't do anything, but we should see if we can get them to start looking for her before we go anywhere else. Uh, I don't know about that, Kanika. I've got to say, I... I feel like that might be a legitimate waste of time. Based on what we've seen of the police of Scarlet Hollow thus far, I really doubt they're going to leap into action to look for the local cryptid hunter who's been missing for less than a day. I mean, Duke straight up died, and they barely seemed interested in that. I think uh, we should stick with people that actually know Stella. And Oscar seems like a good place to start. Plus, you know, it would just be nice to check in with Oscar and Rosa. And Pixel. We should check in on Oscar. He's smart. Maybe he'll know what to do. I hope nothing else happened after we went home last night. They're so brave for sleeping in that house after everything we went through. I'd rather sleep in the woods with the Ditchlings than some place that was that haunted. Your mom said it's safe, and I'm inclined to believe her. Why would she lie? But how would she know that? Magic, probably. But there's only one way to find out. Let's go. Morning light streams in through the library's large windows in the bright daylight. The library is once again a place of comfort, all menace having fled in the wake of Charles Shaw Jr.'s departure. No ghost. Thank God. I was not up for an encore. Yeah, it's gone. Just like your mom said it would be. You can't help but overhear the murmurings of an intense conversation coming from the mayor's office. Or rather, the murmurings of an intense animal conversation. Yes, we are absolutely checking that out. Why would we not? You start making your way upstairs towards the mayor's office. Hey, where are you going? Doggos. Also, cat. Cat. 
A small gang of dogs holds court in the mayor's office. Most of the dogs quietly watch from the sidelines, but two of them, a sheepdog and a basset hound, are in heated conversation with Mayor Jimmy. Their tags read Scraps and Daisy. Aw, Daisy. Pixel sits on a shelf nearby, wearily keeping an ear to the conversation. It sounds like you've all sorted this out. I don't see what you need me to do about any of it. Sorted? Things ain't sorted until this town is safe. Now, we may have got the beginnings of a militia forming, but there's plenty of pets out there who are still ill-informed about those things crawling out of the woods. You're the mayor. They'll listen to you. Just tell them to stay inside until it's handled. Listen, Scraps, buddy, I hear you, but the last thing we need right now is anarchy in the streets. It's no use. I told you he'd be bullheaded. He's always bullheaded. Always the sore loser, aren't we, Daisy? Things are fine. Nobody has to worry about a thing. The mayor pulls himself away from the conversation to acknowledge you. Oh, ho, ho, I remember you. You're that out-of-towner from yesterday. The speaker. The other dogs murmur among themselves for a moment, then turn to face you. I'm sorry you had to see this little display. Politics can get so messy. Uh, maybe, maybe nothing patronizing this does sound like it might be. Serious businesses. So, um... You guys mentioned something about a dog militia that you're putting together? Did, did I hear that right? Yeah, I suppose you could say that. When the town's illustrious leader abandons his kind, it's up to us common folk to band together. Daisy, please, I'm not abandoning anybody, dog or otherwise. You're all blowing this invasion story completely out of proportion. Everything is going to turn out just fine. If everything turns out just fine, it's because the rest of us protected those who need protecting. Wow, so you're the scraps I've heard so much about. Good to finally meet you. The one and only. This here is Daisy, and we've got a few other concerned locals with us as well. Just making sure the cats and dogs of the holler are well cared for, considering recent events. There are more of those things in the woods every day, popping out of the innocent bodies of what used to be dogs like us. They're exaggerating, of course. While I've heard reports of creatures coming out of the woods, it's nothing the humans of this town can't handle. It's no secret that Daisy and Scraps are my competitors, and it's just like them to jump at the first sign of trouble as an opportunity to run me out of office. Nobody's trying to run you out of anything. We're just trying to keep the critters of the town safe. How very noble of you. But that's exactly the line you'd feed the voters if you were trying to get rid of me. Look, this is all fascinating, but... Uh, have any of you seen or smelled Gretchen lately? She and her person are missing. Is she missing? Oh dear. Scraps, you don't think... Gretchen's person would never let that happen to her. Wherever she is, I'm sure she's safe from those things. A dog like her doesn't get to be that age without a watchful human at her side. Even if she's safe, I don't like the sound of this. See, Jimmy, this is the cost of inaction. Gretchen is a pillar of our community, and she's missing. What will it take for you to finally open your eyes and do something? If you wait until you're the last dog left in Scarlet Hollow, it'll be far too late to save yourself. Yes, I get it. You're all very upset. But what do you expect me to do about it? Shut down the town? What about economy? Do you even know what economy is, Jimmy? Or are you just throwing around fancy words you've heard the humans say? 
Uh, of course I know what economy is. I, I know all about economy... ism. Oh, good. Because I've never understood a lick of it when humans talk about economy. I just figured it was just a made-up word. They yell at each other when they want to stop talking. So please, enlighten us. I, I'm not going to debase myself by playing a game of trivia. I'm not in front of the speaker. Hmm. Thought so. To answer your question, we did catch a whiff right around here. And another nearer house. Haven't picked up anything around town since then. Let's hope those creatures haven't already gotten to her. Okay, well, I mean... I don't suppose you guys could help us find her. You're slightly better equipped for this whole tracking thing. We'll do our best. We didn't intend to make any more trips out into the woods, but if it's for Gretchen, we'll take that risk. She's a well-liked dog in these parts. Been around longer than any of us. It'd be a blow to the community for her to fall victim to those monstrosities. Great, uh, thanks. You know, I, I can see why Gretchen admires you so much, Scraps. You're a good dog. <laughs> oh, she flatters me, so... I'm nothing special, just another dog. All the more reason to go after her before it's too late. Don't be so modest, Scraps. You're the kind of dog other dogs listen to. It's a damn shame the humans are so charmed by that charlatan. I'm right here, Daisy. I am well aware. You think you're so high and mighty, don't you? Just because you can sit and stay the best. As if obedience is the best quality in a leader. Man, who knew, uh, who knew that pack politics were so complicated? Part of me wants to sit on the fence and avoid taking sides, but... As we saw this morning, uh, Daisy and Scraps have an entirely valid concern about the incursion of Ditchlings. They're just out in broad daylight now, slowly closing in on the town. That certainly does not bode well for the pets and other critters of Scarlet Hollow. Uh, Mr. Mayor, you know, you really should listen to Daisy and Scraps on this one. There won't be anarchy in the streets to worry about if every animal in town gets taken by ditchlings. Your opinion is noted, but I've been mayor for over 14 years. I know what I'm doing. That's 14 dog years, Jimmy. If you're not going to help, the least you can do is not blow smoke up the speaker's ass. I suppose you were right, Daisy. This was just a waste of time, but I needed to hear it with my own ears before I could really believe it. I'll say that I told you so for later. Let's go rally the others. This town won't save itself. You and the dogs exit the mayor's office and close the door behind you. They quickly turn a corner and vanish from your line of sight. You find Kanika and Avery waiting for you in the lobby. I took a peek in there. You just had a full-on conversation with those dogs. It is so weird when you do that. Weird or cool? I wish I could hear the other side of the conversation. It seems like there's a whole dog culture in this town I've been missing out on. Knowing dogs are capable of carrying a full conversation is going to make being a veterinarian really weird. You'll just have to hire Redcon as a translator. You'd be the best vet in the country with someone like that on your staff. I guess Oscar must be in the back. I know that's where I'd be if I finally managed to unhaunt my house. I've always been surprised at how unsupervised this place is. Sometimes it feels like anyone could just walk in and do whatever they wanted. Like what? Steal books? I mean, they could, right? I'm not saying anyone would. I'm just saying that people in this town trust each other. 
A lot. It's nice. Let's go find Oscar. You make your way back towards the Annex. It feels strange to be back here in the light of day. As if the events of the previous evening were all just a terrible dream. This hallway really takes me back. It feels like it was only yesterday that we were last here, blissfully unaware that our entire lives were about to change forever. It was only yesterday. I know. Kanika knocks on the door. Oh, good morning. It's so good to see all of you. Uh, retcon? He takes in the sight of you, standing in the bright corridor. His expression changes suddenly, his eyebrows curving upwards with a twinge of guilt upon seeing you at his door. I hope you're doing well this morning. Please, come on in. You have no idea how good it felt to sleep in our own house last night. Though I suppose I didn't do too much sleeping. I mostly sat and stared at the hatch all night. Cat. Cats everywhere. Nothing happened, but the idea that something could happen was more than enough to keep me wide awake. So, what brings you here? Stella's been missing since last night, and we're trying to figure out if anyone's seen her. She hasn't gotten in touch with any of you? Hmm. I mean, I don't want to downplay it if she is in trouble, but... I don't know if panicking everyone else is really going to help. Uh, I got a text last night. I think she's doing some self-reflection. But none of us know where she is. I'm guessing you haven't seen her then? No, I'm afraid not. I hope she turns up. The way she ran off last night was so unlike her. I feel like it's my fault. I should have done a better job warning her. I... Stella was practically banging down your door trying to get evidence of ghosts. I don't think you were going to be able to stop her. There was no way you could have known how she would react when she found it. I don't even think she knew how she'd react. And besides, you didn't know how bad it was going to get. You can't blame yourself for everything, man. I know you probably feel like it's your responsibility to make sure everyone around you is okay, but sometimes that's just not going to be possible. You're only one guy. Now I'm really starting to worry. It sounds like no one in town has seen her. That doesn't mean something bad happened. But it doesn't exactly sound like it's all sunshine and roses for her, either. Sorry that I can't be more helpful, especially after everything y'all have done for us. I know time is of the essence right now, but while you're here, I wanted to let you know that I'm determined to do whatever I can to help investigate what's happening to our town. I was hoping we could compare notes. It might help me narrow down where I should start my research. As far as I'm aware, there was... Nothing paranormal in Scarlet Hollow before very recently. Now here we are, suddenly surrounded by weird little goblin creatures in the woods and plagued by angry ghosts. You think there was an inciting event, right? I do. That's my thought, too. It was never like this in the holler before. Something must have happened that kicked off all this magic stuff. Avery stares at you. I mean, it's obvious, right? Things only started happening once Redcon got here. You're not wrong. Exactly. If there's a catalyst for all this, why wouldn't it be a lost Scarlet finally coming home to Scarlet Hollow? 
If I may, Redcon getting into town isn't the only major event that's happened lately. Perlan died over a week ago, and those creatures in the woods were already reproducing by the time he got to town. Not to mention, I started seeing things in our house before Perlan passed. I think. I never thought to make a note of exactly when the spirit made itself known. If there's a root cause for all of this, hopefully there's a way to put the genie back in its bottle. I'm going to do my best to find out if there have been any similar events, and whether there's anything special about Scarlet Hollow that might explain what's going on. We'll fill you in on what little we know, so you at least have some place to start. Hmm. Well, first things first, you should really make sure that Pixel stays inside. There's a lot of ditchlings around right now. The ditchlings are those things from the woods, right? With those faces? Yeah, the Anguished Doughboys. I kind of like them. It's like a hidden object game out there today, with all the weird little faces peering out of the bushes. Like them? Are we talking about the same creatures that have been laying eggs in the local wildlife? I don't want to get friendly with them or anything, I just think they're kind of interesting. To each their own. I will do. I can't imagine how devastated Rosalina would be if something were to happen to him. Especially after everything she's been through. Yeah, about that. Are we sure the ghost is really gone? I have every reason to believe so. There wasn't so much as a creaking door or a mysterious draft all night. And I certainly hope this isn't wishful thinking, given the toll it took on you to get rid of it. You're so brave for sleeping in here. I would have left and set the place on fire behind me if I were in your shoes. No matter if someone wound up putting it to rest or not. I suppose I felt I'd done enough running. I'd seen the worst you could do, and I was willing to risk it if it meant Rosalina wouldn't spend another night sleeping on a cot in the back room of a library. So, uh, we keep finding these weird stone seals. There's one in the mines and another one in your basement. There might be more. These are those carvings you mentioned last night, right? To think there was something like that under my house all this time. And to think someone must have put it there. But who? This gives me quite a few threads to follow. Thank you, Redcon. Redcon, didn't you say you felt something similar to the mine seal outside the clinic yesterday? I hope that doesn't mean something weird is about to happen there, too. Uh-oh. Losing the only doctor's office in town sounds like it would be... bad. Here's hoping we sort things out before that becomes an issue. You know, I was thinking about filling that basement with cement and pretending it was never a part of this house. But if we're all here, maybe we should go down and... Oscar sighs. Take a closer look at that carving, seal, whatever it is. Oh, heck yeah. It'll be like checking out the behind the scenes of a haunted house the morning after. I mean, I know you're joking, but that's literally what we'd be doing, right? Ha, <laughs> now that you mention it, yeah. I guess that wasn't the best analogy. It's been bad enough going into haunted houses and abandoned coal mines at night. But there's something that feels so much worse about going down there in the middle of the day. I can't say I'm thrilled at the thought of it either. But we need to do whatever we can to start getting ahead of things. I really don't think this is a good idea. I mean, we paid a pretty steep price to keep access to the seal. We're obviously not going to squander it. 
Look, I get it. I don't want to go down there either, but we have to. We have to find out more. Are we sure nothing will happen if we open the hatch again? Redcon, I don't know how many more years you can spare. Eh, you can't just spend the rest of your life worrying that a room in your house might be a gateway to a ghost dimension. It'll be better to clear out the demons and make that space your own. <laughs> Besides, that thing is gone. We don't have to second-guess ourselves. You're right. I told myself I'd stop letting my fears get the best of me. And I'm going to hold myself to that. Oscar leads you back down the familiar hallway to Rosalina's room. Oh, uh, hey, Dad. What are you all doing in here? I'm going back into the basement, Rosa. Bat. Bat. I'm afraid there's something down there that might help us figure out what's going on in town. It's probably best you go to the library while we... No way. If you're going down there, I'm going too. Remember what you said last night? No more secrets. We're in this together. You're right, Rosa. You can come with us. No more secrets. Am I the only person in this town who doesn't have a death wish? Sybil said the ghost is gone. I really don't think there's anything to be afraid of down there anymore. Just give me a moment to move all this out of the way. Oscar gets to work moving the furniture from the trap door, his broad shoulders making quick work of it. Before you and your companions know it, you find yourselves transfixed to the trap door. I... I don't want to go back down there. It's okay, Alexis. You don't have to come with us. We can stay up here together while everyone else goes down there. Oscar opens up the hatch with a menacing creak. Everybody's heart skips a beat, though Avery's might have skipped a beat out of excitement rather than fear. But none of you are swept up into a ghost's nightmare puppet show. The sun continues to shine, the birds continue to sing outside Rosalina's window. See? Nothing to worry about. The slight tremor in his voice tells you he's mostly saying that to himself. Shall we? If you're sure you want to do this, I won't stop you. But I do not like the vibes I'm getting from that pit. Descend. You descend the basement stairs and find yourself in the same cold, unfinished place you were in last night. You can't shake an oppressive feeling. But whether that feeling is driven more by the trauma of the past night or by something more tangible, you're unsure. Well, I guess whatever we're looking for is in that pit. I guess we should take a look. Oscar walks up to the burial site, eyes widening as he peers inside. The eternally screaming remains of Charles Shaw Jr. are exactly where you left them last night, staring back up at you from empty sockets. The carving lies beneath them, the heavy cold stone acting as his coffin. Yeah, look at that. It's a goat head surrounded by three running wolves. And then... Fire? I guess that would be, like, two layers to keep something contained, perhaps? Its style is more than just similar to the carving in the mines. Both stones were carved by the same artist. Charlie. Whoa, cool. Dang, Charlie. Retcon's grandma really did a number on you. 
Nobody touch it. I'll have to call Dr. Kelly about this. We should put this body to rest, right? That's how these things usually go. At least in the movies. And hey, we disturbed his body and he hasn't come back for a sequel. Confirmation that he's gone for good, right? I think so. That's going to make it a lot easier to sleep tonight. Does that mean you'll let me sleep in my actual bed? Whoa, whoa, let, let's give it one more night. I still don't know how I feel about you sleeping on top of that rock. So what are we thinking? Wolves encircling a goat. It's a start, but... What was on the carving in the mines? A circle of arms bound up in chains. Which could have symbolized, like, binding the miners there, perhaps? Even beyond death, that would certainly explain the ghosts and the Tommyknockers. And then perhaps this one was intended to keep people from being able to flee Scarlet Hollow. Uh, Stella took a photo of it. Not that that's helpful right now. But maybe once we find her, she can send it to you. Interesting. I'm sure that description will be more than enough to get started. Can Alexis and I help? I want to know why someone put this creepy stuff under my room. Sure, you can help. And I think destroying this is probably a bad idea until we have a better idea of exactly what it does. All right, um, I think I've seen enough. We should get back to looking for Stella. Time to go. Yes, let's get back upstairs. Now that we know it's safe down here, I'll come back on my own time to do a more thorough examination. You and the others make your way back up to Rosalina's room. As soon as you're all in one place, Oscar closes the trap door and moves the pile of furniture back in place. So, did y'all get possessed or cursed or anything? No, but we did see a dead body. Close enough. Glad I stayed put. Alexis, you want to see a picture of it? Ew. Okay. I'm not sure that's appropriate. Alexis's parents might not approve of you showing their daughter pictures of dead people. They let her watch all kinds of scary movies, Dad. It's fine. And maybe she can help with the investigation, too. Yeah, it's totally okay, Mr. Gutierrez. I don't want to see it in person, but I, I do want to see it. Before Oscar has a chance to get in another word, Rosalina's already pulled up the picture on her phone. Whoa, I can't believe you're going to sleep in here. You're so brave. Oscar sighs. I'll be back to check on you two in a minute. I've just got a couple of things to finish up with these folks. You, Kanika, and Avery follow Oscar back to the living room. So, I have more than enough to get started on my research now, but... Is there anything else I should know about? I mean, I've got to say, I'm still getting some pretty strong cult vibes here. Yeah, you mentioned something like this at the library the other day. If there was a cult in Scarlet Hollow, I, I feel like I'd know about it. Oh, would you now? What, do you just have like an innate familiarity with North Carolinian cults? Do you know about any local cults that might be behind this? Let's not get all satanic panic just yet. I know it's not looking unlikely at this point, but having lived in this town all my life, I feel like I would know if there was some cult that ran the place. Yeah, but there's a lot of stuff in this town you clearly didn't know about. It just seems like the kind of thing that wouldn't be easy to keep secret in a place as small as Scarlet Hollow. I'd love to be part of some weird religious cult. 
just to see what kind of stuff they get up to. But alas, either I've never been invited or there are none to be found in the holler. I don't even know of any in public record, even in the 70s, when cults were a dime a dozen and hippies were flocking to the hills. Fair enough. But uh, we do still have another lead. We've got whatever's hidden in the clinic. I think there's something in there. There was this door yesterday, and I could, I could feel something pulling me towards it. Right, I'd almost forgotten after everything that happened yesterday. You said there was something there that reminded you of the mines, right? I see. I'll dig up what I can on the clinic. There's a lot of history there. I would be surprised if there's something haunting that place as well. You have a friend that lives there, right? Should we tell him that something bad might happen in his house? He might want to stay someplace else for now, if the last few nights are any indication. Yeah, I can shoot Reese a warning text, but I don't know if his mom will let him leave. She's got an iron grip on the poor dude, and she's probably even more of a skeptic than I am. Uh, was. Well, there's an easy solution here. Reese... Reese wanted to set up a movie date, right? Like a movie night for all of us? That's the perfect cover for an investigation. <sighs> Who knows if that would fly with Dr. Kelly, though. After last night, I'm, I'm pretty sure she's not going to let us anywhere near her house. She's the only doctor in town. She can't just ban people from the clinic, right? I don't think so, but hopefully nobody gets sick or hurt enough to justify a visit over the next couple of days. If we're going to investigate the clinic, I think we're going to have to break in. Or I could just try approaching her and ask her about my ghost curse. I mean, people have been commenting on it all morning, so it must be visually obvious, and she did meet us just the other day. Would she really be comfortable just kicking me out if there was something obviously wrong with me? Whoa, that is unexpected coming from you. It's what Stella would do, and she's been three for three this week when it comes to finding spooky stuff. She's also been three for three when it comes to finding her way into mortal peril. This is why we have to find her as soon as possible. It shouldn't fall on me to suggest we do something dangerous. I'm terrible at selling it. It's not that I don't think we should figure out what's going on in there. We just... We just need to be cautious about what we do next. We don't want anyone to get attacked or possessed by any more ghosts even if it is to help a friend. I don't know if we have time to play it safe. Just give me a day or two to do some research before you do anything rash, okay? Yeah, I'm not sure I really see that happening, but I'll take it under consideration. But whatever we're doing next, I feel like we're missing a vital team member. We need to find Stella and Gretchen. Fast. I agree. We need her brazen energy if we're going to do any serious sleuthing. See you around, Oscar. Let us know what you find. I will. So, that's Oscar. Any other ideas? And once again, we find ourselves at a metaphorical crossroads. Four optional locations left to visit, but no guarantee we'll actually be able to visit all of them. And, uh, you know, given that we're past time, I feel like this is a good place to call it. We'll hit the pause button for now, and I'll draw up a list of what order I feel like we should try to hit these last few locations in. And then we'll pick up here next time and we'll just start working our way down the list. At least until the game inevitably stops us. I mean, I think it's pretty clear that while we're not going to find Stella at any of these locations, each one does have its own unique opportunities or events for us to investigate or exploit. 
like recruiting the dog militia or getting the ball rolling on Oscar's research. Or just learning more about Stella, like we did back at her house. So we'll definitely have to put some careful thought into where we head next. See you then. Oh, and remember, although I do love playing Scarlet Hollow, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official website. And if you'd like to help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things, or maybe even check out the Patreon, the YouTube memberships, or the Nexus GG page. Links are in the description.